Okay, this is a saturation current circuit that I prototype here. I'm using a function generator to generate my pulses. In this case, I'm using a RIGO. And then I'm using an integrator chip because the impedance of this is 50 uh, ohms. So it doesn't have enough uh, low impedance to drive this capacitor, or not the capacitor, MOSFET, which is the STP80 NF55. It's got an 8 ohm, milli ohm RDS on. And then at this point is where we would put the scope to monitor the current. So basically what you want to do is you want to put uh, a small pulse right here and you want to turn this MOSFET basically switch on for a very short time okay so basically when you put 12 volts here this is grounded through this resistor you can call this a R sense resistor and you scope it that way the voltage drop across the resistor is a representation of your current high current and that current is a representation of the current that is flowing through the inductor okay so basically if you have the inductor and you put 12 volts Okay, as you put the 12 volts, let's say this would be the voltage across VL, then the current should start ramping up like this. Okay. However, there's a point that as you're pumping in current and this current is building up, the in core can no longer build up a flux. The flux is already saturated. So instead, it stops acting as a inductor and you start, as you increase the tying width, as this gets larger and larger, then you start seeing a little curve, exponential curve, okay? so. It, it stops being linear so this section is linear but then once you see this deflection then you're at the point you're already at the saturation current okay. so I have a piece of a, an inductor or a core here let's, let's see if we can take a look here is the function generator this the rifle and unfortunately uh, this generator is not uh, in my opinion it lacks uh, a very fast leading and trailing edge when you are operating at a very repetition uh, low repeti uh, rep repetition rate it basically the slope instead of being nice and sharp they, they're very very uh, wide and that's a little I guess a design flaw of this particular one. Uh, the Sigma has a much better uh, function generator and uh, I probably will end up getting one of those function generators. Anyway uh, because of that I have to use it in the pulse mode so I'm pulsing uh, one kilohertz but I'm wrapping it at a hundred milliseconds okay and the reason is I, if I go too high of a rep rate then I start drawing quite a bit of current and I don't want to draw that as a matter of fact my MOSFET would get hot so in this case my function generator is connected here and then this is the T 
C4429, and then there's a connection from the output to the gate right here. That's the gate. And then right here is the uh, source, and that's where I tied these uh, sense resistors. And as you can tell, they started burning up. These are one ohm. I don't have anything that low. So what I did is I calculated uh, what the resistance would be uh, for one foot of 26 American wire gauge. So I'm using that as my shot. But anyway, I really don't need to know the sense. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate it differently. Okay, and then this here right there, I have my inductor or transformer and flyback connected from the drain. And then this is the 12 volts. And then I put this diode here so it stops the ringing. Now another thing that I want to point out that if this is my 12 volts coming from my Rigel, okay, if you don't put any caps here, then this voltage is going to sag. So you have to put quite a bit of capacitance. So basically I'm monitoring the input of the function generator, which would be the yellow one. Okay. okay. Well, actually, it's the output of the TC, basically, right there. So that's the gate, the yellow, the yellow. And then the collector, or not the collector, but the drain is the red one. So I'll go ahead and, so basically when the yellow goes up, the drain goes down, okay? So, I'll go ahead and turn that off because that's what we want to do. We want to see the blue one. The blue is this probe here that's across this resistor. Okay. So, if I had the voltage and I knew what my resistor value is, I can quickly calculate my, uh, my current, saturation current. However, I really don't have a very good accurate, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll calculate it a little bit different, okay? So, but I'm gonna go ahead and show what happens. Here is a current, and if you notice, it's linear. And then there's a little bit of deflection up here. So if I increase the time, say, so right there, that's your saturation current. Right there, you see, so basically it looks linear and then it starts deflecting. So in this region, from there to here, it looks like an inductor, but then once you pass that, then this region, it's no longer an inductor, it's rather acting as a wire, okay? So it means that your current is going way, way up. And if we keep increasing this, then see it, it deviates upwards. So, and if you notice, I'm increasing. So current quickly goes up. So I'm decreasing it, current goes down. Okay, current goes down as I decrease the time on. And if I increase it, it goes up. And it goes up rather quickly once it's saturated. So you can see that, that uh, I would say that about that time, that time would be approximately 20 microseconds. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna say it's 20. Microseconds, so that would be our T on, and then the voltage. And if you notice, we're putting about 13, uh, 13 volts. See, 
13 volts. Okay, and I believe the inductor is 10 micro Henry. Okay, so you should be able to, is it DI, VL, DT. So, 13 volts. Henry will say 20 microseconds okay so I usually use my calculator here on my phone but I'm filming so let's use the calculator Microseconds divided by ten Did I do that right? Okay, let me read do this again. Sorry. Okay, thirteen times Oh, 15. Up by 10. Whoa, so it's 26. Yeah, 26 apps. That's quite a bit of current. Wow. So that is the saturation current that this thing is going to take. So. I said. Okay, so that's the point we're starting to. Now, if you have this, then you should be able to backtrack and see what VSAT would be. Because theoretically, that is what. Uh, that would be now to calculate BSAT knowing that what the current is I believe you can use the ET I believe is the the area effective area and then I think it's the turns BSAT you can use that equation okay and I don't know what this AE is at this time, but if you plug in the time, we already know what the time is, 20. In the end, I believe the end, I don't have that information, but if you have the turns ratio and the area of the inductor, then you can calculate what VSAT is as well. Okay, anyway, that's a little short, quick video. I want to show how to perform a saturation current test. Thank you for watching.